Thank you, Brother Given, Brother Judah. This is a wonderful consideration. This entire series has been a wonderful consideration. I can testify that I've been added to by these, these uh, words that Brother Given's given us. As I was, Brother Given was speaking tonight, I, I was thinking of Hebrews 8 1. Now, this is the sum. You know, there's a bottom line. But what Brother Given was talking about, see, this is the line of demarcation. This is the bottom line now. This morning, remember, we heard about what do you think of Jesus? See, there just comes a point in time where it, it, be, it funnels down to a, a single thought. What do you think of Jesus? Are you in the new covenant or are you not in the new covenant? This um, God has provided in the person of Christ a sufficient and competent high priest in things pertaining to God. He's put in place exactly what we needed to know him. And of course, this is the only way that men will ever know him is if they come in the person of Christ Jesus. The, technically, as we've heard tonight, the covenant was struck with him. So technically, this is a covenant of works. It's just whose works we're talking about. It's Jesus has worked. He's done all things that were required under the law of Moses. He's done it. And now see, do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that he has done all things on your behalf? That you can come now into the presence of God and, and you find a peaceful God, a happy God? See, Jesus has accomplished this. So the bottom line, or he would say the sum, is the sum. It's good to be able to sum things up. Amen. See, you get a lot done if you can sum things up. This is the covenant. Now, you, you can read this at the bottom of this is what Brother Given summed up. This is a covenant based upon what the Lord has done. It's not based on works of righteousness that you have done. Thank God for that. We had enough. We all spent our time, our tenure under the law. If you haven't, then, you know, have you ever tried to do what was right? You really wanted to do what was right. You said, well, I, I think I can do this now. Okay. And you have some weeks where you, you thought, you thought you might have done well, but you found out it just what didn't give you the confidence that this man, see, this man has, he has done all things well. <laughs> Amen. So see, now, since it's based on, the works of Christ, now the covenant, God, in other words, can keep his covenant. See, Christ is never going to violate the covenant. Christ, he, he's kept the law and he made it honorable. So now you come into him and the his person, you'll never get a, you'll never, God will never cast anyone away that's in the person of Christ, ever. Why? Because of this covenant. See, it, it, we come based on the works of Jesus. Now, Jesus makes it right it says also down there, Jesus makes it right for God to receive you. Jesus makes it right for God to forgive sinners. God sent a person to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So now, technically, technically now, when Christ brings you to God, you're no more a sinner by the time you reach God. God can't receive sinners now. God can't be, he can't do it. Otherwise, if God can receive even one sinner, why does he need Christ? Why? Technically, God put Christ there in order that he might take away sin to where when, now when Jesus brings you to the Father, you're sinless. Your sins are gone. Now, if for me, if, if, if this isn't the most important thing, that Christ take away my sin so that I can be with God, well, then what is, what is Christ for? What, what, what is his function if it's not to take away sin and then deliver us to Christ? I hope I haven't confused this. The, 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 well, as I was listening to this sermon tonight, see, this, this is the gospel, what we've heard tonight. This is the, the, 
that God yeah. so loved the world that, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him would not perish, mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. This is the crux. This is, the, this is what we needed, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. So what, I'll get to the Amen. exhortation here. What, you look at the sum of what Christ done. Seeing then, we have a great high priest. Seeing that he, God set him there, let's draw near. Amen. See, draw Amen. near because all the provisions have been made. Amen. The, he's killed the fatted calf. Come, yes. come and dine. Yes. Are you thirsty? See, the gospel makes you, makes you realize how thirsty you really are. Someone starts preaching the gospel, and I want to draw near to God because he's done all things well. Amen. And not only is God made pleased in the gospel, but as you are made pleased in it, as you see that God's done everything, you see how it has drawing power. It draws you to the throne of grace. Why? So you can find grace and help in the time of need. Whether or not we can see it or not, we're in a time of need. I mean, he, God, will, God will show you the, your time of need if you're serious. Well, as long as we have these containers, we're in a time of need. So, see, that's, a, that's an exhortation. And another exhortation is found in Hebrews 12, 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. See, God's sitting there, but he isn't sitting there as an icon. He's, he's working. Yeah. And so, see... Don't refuse him. Sometimes, sometimes some of the things Jesus said are hard, hard to be received because we, we have things that need to go. We have things that need to be pruned off. And Jesus is a faithful minister. That's why God said him. He's faithful. He'll mention some things that maybe you didn't want to hear it just like that. Don't refuse him to speak it. Receive it. Allow it to work in you, the thing that God sent it to do. And in the end... He'll, he'll deliver you to the Father, free from sin, totally ready, ready to inhabit eternity, ready to fit into the place that he's been pruning you for the whole time. And how did that happen? Because you submitted to him that God, God sent to you. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Now, in that in the context of that text, I see that there is a way that you could not serve him acceptably. See, there, there's a sense in which if you don't listen to Jesus, no matter what you do, it's not acceptable. See, the, in the context of this, you have to submit to God and submit to Christ, and in that, you're serving God acceptably. But the very fact that he said it, the very fact that we're here, that it has to be done. And of course, he's talking about in in faith, draw near in faith, believing that he can, he can accomplish what he promised, and that's acceptable with God. This, um, we, this reverence and godly fear, we're living in a time when these things need to be revived. Reverence and godly fear. Yeah. I've heard so much loose talk about, uh -huh. about God and loose talk about the, the presence of God. If you know you're in the presence of God, to not operate with reverence and godly fear. It's a fearful thing. It's the next verse. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Why? He's, he says God we're talking about. This is not, not just a man. God is not a man. See, now, so this is, this is, um, this is a, it, these things, Christ has made a way that we can do these. We can serve him acceptably. And um, it's in the context of this, um, this reverence to see who he is and now let's see at the same time now to be able to come confidently into his presence. You see, only, only faith can, re can do this. Only if you believe what Jesus has done can you actually come into the presence of God with reverence and godly fear, all of them operating at the same time, and ask for help. <laughs> A natural man is not going to do this. The presence of God is very awesome. And you, you just come into the presence of an angel and you fall down at his feet. You come into the presence of, of God and ask for help 
What would provoke you to do that? You see that the, this man, Christ Jesus, has taken away your sin and given you God's righteousness. Well, this is, these are good things we've heard tonight. Um, I'll open it up. Any 